Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here a package from a company called Netbook Navigator, which is sort of an ironic name because what's in the box is not a netbook at all, but rather a tablet-style computer, or a slate-style PC, if you want to be a purist, since it doesn't have a keyboard. So, uh, first thing we've got in here is some information that... Uh, Probably just review information for uh, reviewers. This is actually all printouts from the company's website. And then we've got the box itself. So let's go ahead and take that out and take a closer look. Right, there we go. So we've got the Nav9 Slate PC from Netbook Navigator, uh, the future of mobile computing. It's model A91, A9, uh, and N. The uh, A89 here uh, probably stands for the 8.9 inch display on this particular model. Nothing on that side, just the logo on the back. Over here, uh, there's a sticker that says 2 gigabytes of RAM. Nothing checked off in terms of storage, so uh, don't know exactly how much storage is on this model. And comes in black or silver, not sure which one we got. So let's open it up and take a look. First thing is you've got the case with the Netbook Navigator Nav9 tablet inside. Set that aside just for a second so that we can see what else is in the box. Uh, this is a review unit that was sent to me by Netbook Navigator, so it might not be exactly what you would get with a retail box. Um, and I'm not entirely sure which configuration they sent. It starts at about $599, but uh, options can drive the price way up over $1,000, depending on what you get. So it looks like what we've got here is a VGA adapter and an Ethernet adapter. We've got a power brick and power cable. A stylus, Windows 7 Home Premium OEM Edition, and a user manual. Now the stylus looks like it's got a screw on it, and it's expandable, so that's interesting. Uh, it doesn't look like it goes in the case, though. And now it's time to take a look at the tablet. So. Here you can see how it fits in the case, and now it's going out of the case. It's a little bit heavy for a handheld item, um, probably close to about two pounds. So it's a little bit lighter than a typical netbook, but heavier than uh, some other tablets that I've used. Let's take a look around the... Uh, something just came off here. We'll figure that out in a second. Around the sides, we've got power, two USB ports on this side, headphone, ethernet, I mean headphone, uh, microphone, uh, this appears to be that Ethernet and VGA adapter slot, so if you have that adapter, you can plug in um, right there. The adapter seems to be sort of a cheap plasticky feel, but you know, if it gets the job done, you've got your VGA port and you've got your Ethernet port. I can't really imagine using a computer like this too much with Ethernet unless you were also using VGA and setting it up to sort of work like a desktop computer. Uh, along the bottom, we've got nothing. Along the side, we've got, uh, looks like a SD card and SIM card slot, both in one space here. Another USB port, so that's a total of three. We've got a vent. On the top, uh, I don't know for certain if these are vents or speakers, but uh, there's a couple of little passages here. Uh, power button, some LED lights. On the back, it looks like there's a single access panel. Um, I imagine that you should be able to access the RAM here. Um, looks kind of small for storage, but I think this is SSD storage instead of um, a hard drive. So it could be that there's the SSD in there as well. There's a sticker that says warranty void if, remo if removed. And um, as we saw with the earliest netbooks, that's, uh, that's problematic because um, according to US law, you're allowed to 
open up and replace the RAM and do things like that. You can't you can't have a warranty that's void in those certain circumstances. So um, you know, if you did decide to open this up and replace your RAM or make some other changes, you might have to uh, fight a little bit with Netbook Navigator, the company who put that sticker on there. But uh, if you were willing to go to court, you might be able to win. Uh, looks like that little foot that fell off here was a... Uh, that doesn't... There it goes. Um, we've got a couple of little rubber or plastic uh, squishy guys down here so that when you put it down, it doesn't have the uh, actual back quite touching the table. Uh, Intel Atom inside, and that's not surprising. The uh, components here are very similar to what you would get in a typical off-the-shelf netbook. It's just that it comes in a slate style instead of a netbook style. Um, more ports in, or uh, more vents here in the back. So hopefully uh, overheating is not gonna be a big issue. Um, I am curious to see how loud it's gonna be when it's running though. Um, holding it upside down apparently. Uh, on the front, you've got a camera up top. Uh, these LED lights show power, uh, battery, activity, uh, number lock, it looks like, and uh, caps lock, and wireless activity. An AV9 logo. The screen is uh, sort of, well, the screen's definitely plastic. It's not glass, and there's a shiny black bezel around the edges. Um, you can probably see my face in it if I do this. So uh, as you can see, it's a glossy display. It's a glossy touchscreen resistive display. Um, and as I mentioned, there's no place to put the stylus in the side as there are with some other computers. So, um, you know, you're gonna wanna keep a stylus in your pocket or somewhere else. Looks like this model has been used a little bit because there's a little bit of scratching here on the screen. I don't know if you can see that. But right about here, there's some wear. So, you know, this is a relatively new unit, uh, but it is a demo unit. So hopefully that wear comes from excessive use, but uh, it's possible that, that could be a problem. Uh, let's see if it powers up. And got some press and hold the power button to turn it on. That's a kind of funny thing to say, notebook. Um, when again, there's no keyboard. Okay, so we're booting Windows. While it's loading, I'll just do a quick comparison. As I mentioned, this is an 8.9 inch display. Uh, if you compare it with something like the uh, uh, WiiPad or HiPad or MID 700 here, uh, this has a seven inch screen. You can see it's substantially smaller. Uh, this is gonna be more the size of something like the Samsung Galaxy Tab whereas the Netbook Navigator is actually uh, closer in size to the iPad, which has a 9.7 inch display. Uh, again, here's another seven inch device. This is the Login Gen Touch 78, and that's compared with the larger screen on the um, Netbook Navigator. You can actually pretty much fit the Login just inside the display. You can also see that the uh, Netbook Navigator Nav9 has a uh, larger bezel around the sides. Um, okay, so there we are, it's loaded up. It is uh, it is a resistive touchscreen display, which means that it's gonna work best with a stylus or a fingertip. Um, just to show, you should be able to do some activities using a fingertip, but it's not really designed for fingertip input um, as uh, something like the iPad or some, anything with a capacitive display would be. Uh, looks like we've got 30 gigabytes of storage here. Press and hold to emulate a right click. Properties. Uh, 12 gigabytes are used, so it'll be interesting to see if it's just from Windows or if there's anything else on here. Windows 7 Home Premium with a 1.66 gigahertz uh, Intel Atom N280 processor, two gigabytes of memory, 32-bit version of the operating system, uh, multi-touch screen. So even though it's resistive, it actually supports multi-touch gestures. Although again, if you're using your fingertip, you're gonna have to push a little bit harder. If you're using uh, your fingernail, it might work okay. And you can see we're actually scrolling up and down here by using two fingers. Okay, actually we're scrolling by using one finger, apparently. <laughs> you can do that there. Um, and there you go. So that's the first look at the Nav9 
uh, 8.9 inch tablet from Netbook Navigator. Overall, um, you know, it seems fairly responsive. It's got the resistive display, but it's responding to touch. You're not really going to want to do this, again, because it's going to be kind of hard to hit precise points on this 1024 by 600 display. Um, and actually, that's pretty good. I'm clicking, but it's not exiting. But if you press a little bit harder, it does. So it does look like you need to do a little bit of a, of a you know, hard press. Uh, another thing is there's no accelerometer in here, which means that if you rotate the display for reading books or something, you're going to need to manually rotate the display. It's not going to do it automatically. Um, but you've got this on-screen keyboard for entering text. It's resizable. It can be relocated. And uh, once I have a chance to hook it up to the internet and uh, do some uh, surfing, we'll see how, uh, how it handles web browsing, uh, entering text, uh, you know, watching videos, doing some of those things that you might expect to do on a mobile device like this. Um, so overall, you know, build quality is not bad. It's a plastic case, but it's a fairly sturdy plastic case. The display, the glossiness of the display doesn't have me that excited, but when you turn the screen on, it's not hard to see in a fairly well-lit room like this one. Um, the touchscreen, you have to press a little hard, but, you, you know, if you're not going to be entering a lot of text, but doing things like surfing the web, it doesn't seem like it'll be a problem. It does have three USB ports, which means you can plug in a keyboard if you want to do that. Um, and uh, that lack of an accelerometer could be a little problematic if you wanted to read a book or something. Um, biggest problem right now is probably just the fact that it weighs close to two pounds, which makes it a fairly heavy device to hold in one hand um, while using with the other. But... Uh, you know, um, stay tuned to lilliputing.com for more details on the Nav9 tablet, and uh, I'll have a complete review after I've had a little more time to uh, test it out and see how it performs. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.